So I'm going to talk about enhancements to the grid control. The, I briefly mentioned the status bar in the um, roadmap talk. I'm going to talk about progress bar enhancements, picture control enhancements, the new hint text API, and the IME support. So grid data filtering and user data filtering for Win32 and Win64. I think it was available on .NET before. There's a new attribute in Attribute Inspector, and the language based is the language is based on the current locale. So this is how this looks like. You basically click on that. If it's enabled, you get that filter icon in the right corner of the column title. Click on it, and then you can do things like company is equal to things begin with, um, contains, does not contain, starts with, ends with, and things like that. Um, oops. Oh yeah. Actually, the screenshot is a bit um, not not perfect. So allow text filter. Yes, that would enable this feature here in a grid control. And I was confused by the IME mode here below, but that's something I will show you later. So grid data filtering. I do have a sample for you here. Now I'm launching the Team Developer 7.0 Win64 version, and I do have a global meet control right in head in front of it. Can you see that? <laughs> it's just X64 behind this window here. <laughs> okay. Oh, here you see it, right? So, oops. Let me open the grid application. Now, so here's a, an application that has a form one. If you go to layout mode, click on that grid control, check attribute inspector. Um, so where are we? Or is it on uh, column basis? It seems to be on column basis. Oh, yes, see, you can set that per column. Allow text filter. It would be yes here, and you can set that per column. So let's do this. And uh, if I go to country, text filters, country starts with. Where is it? Begins with, okay. So I get USA and UK, so a nice little feature. And just wanting to remind you that we also have this grouping feature here. Uh, users can group by um, columns that has been introduced. And also sorting, so you can just click into the column to do a local sort. And there's a function actually to save the state of this uh, grid control, so you can save that in an, into an XML file and load the state later, so to apply the same appearance that a user, where a user has left before. Grid data export, another thing that we have enhanced is we um, export you can now limit the amount of rows, limit the amount of columns, and you can also include or exclude a he header row in the um, Excel or cobalt separated values files that you are going to create. So, so basically, there's a, a variable that is called here below, salgrid data export, EX, and that has an N export options um, parameter at the end, and the N export options is an N separated a list of these um, export options, basically export selected rows, export selected columns, 
and export height headers. Um, actually, pretty simple. And let's check this out. Now let's to, let's use the 32-bit version for a change. Um, I think before we mentioned in the during lunch regarding the uh, exchangeability of source code between 32-bit and 64-bit versions. So what you see now is actually that we have two IDEs, the 64-bit and the 32-bit version. And to be able to interchange files or exchange files between versions, you should have your source code in uh, text format. So, just need to change the directory here. And you see I have text format, so it's, I can easily load that in the 32-bit version now. Compile this application. It shows some data in a grid control. Now I can, um, you know, if I press export, it will export all this. But um, let's do something different. Let's select some rows and some columns. So. And if I switch this on, then I will just export this to an Excel file. If I import that Excel file into another grid here, you see it did include the column headers and has just those rows that I selected and just those columns that I selected. Um, the grid summary bar has been enhanced a little bit. The format of the summary, the, the format of the value of the summary bar can be set using style grid set column format picture. And you can use date format strings and number format strings. So basically, it's this, what you see here below, so count is kind of the um, title of the summary value. This one here is automatically um, calculated could be automatically calculated. You can also set that yourself. But the dollar sign is coming from an applied format that, that is being set here via this button, for example. And this uses the same formatting pictures that, is be, that are being used throughout Team Developer. So now back in the 64-bit version here, and now you see the count is 28, so there's 28 rows, rows here. And now if I apply the dollar formatting, then you get the format string that has been as, you know, defined, or you do a percent value or a simple number value with um, a certain amount of behind the dot numbers, figures. So a little more control over what you see in the summary bar. Status bar, you can keep your users updated on the status of the application. You get multiple panes for the status bar, text, tooltips, images, progress bar. So basically two, uh, four types of things you can put in there. Um, you have a full API to control that toolbar, uh, that status bar. And that, this is one example here. This, I think, has two panes. This is one pane here with an icon in it. This is another pane with an icon, and then you have a progress bar here in the middle. Or just three panes, but each pane has an image assigned to it here. So the status bar API has these functions. You can create a pane using SAR status add pane. You can you can set panes visible and invisible using style status set pane visible. You can get and set the text of a pane using style status set text for the main pane and style status set pane text for the pane text. You can set the pane image using this function here, style status set pane image 
create a progress bar in a um, status bar, class status, create progress bar, and then you can use the progress bar API to control the progress bar. So the progress bar, I think, has been introduced in Team Developer 6.2, if I recall right. Then these functions can be used to manip manipulate the progress bar inside the status bar. You can set pane tooltips, so if you move over the pane, you get a tooltip text. Okay, another sample. So I basically created an application that allows to use the full API. Um, you see there's a default status bar at the bottom now that has an icon here. Um, you can, for the default status bar, set a different icon. You see the, the icon changing below. Remove the icon, hide the main status bar, show the main status bar, add a second pane, and this pane has an uh, icon image here as well. Hide that pane, show that pane, Set pane text, set pane tooltip. See that tooltip showing up there below. Add pane three, hide pane three, show pane three. Create a progress bar, um, hide progress bar, mm -hmm. show progress bar, and these are the progress bar APIs that have been introduced before at Team Developer. So these are all the status bar functions that are available. In TD 7.0. Progress bar enhancements, new API for displaying the current value, style meter set show percent, and you actually saw that in this sample that I had before, style meter set text color allows you to set the text color of the uh, value of the progress bar. Um, if you go back here, in the sample here, um, create progress bar. You see this percent value. You can define the color of the font here if you like. I don't think we need to go through the sample because I just showed you this other one. The new hint text API get and set hint text data for data fields, multi line text fields, combo boxes. The hint text is quite nice, I think. It's a nice visual way where you get a hint in the field itself that's being used a lot in websites nowadays or in mobile applications. So you can use that with your team developer applications as well. So, so I'll get hint text. You can retrieve the hint text or you can set the hint text itself. And I do have a sample for this. So you see, <clears throat> here's the preset hint text. Now I can get the hint text and it will be displayed here in that data field. If I set the hint text, then uh, you put in something different here. Get, set, get, set. So exciting stuff, but that's, you know, if you program large applications, these hint texts are really a nice way to help your users out on what to enter into fields. Picture control enhancements, support for EMF vector images. And EMF stands for Enhanced Windows Meta Files. I didn't know this file format before. Used for vector images of an item that will be produced by machines. So, for example, we have a customer in Switzerland, <coughs> and he last year he demoed his application at our developers conference in Berlin. And this, his team developer application goes from 
the first, you know, receiving the order from a customer, entering that order data into system up to the production process. So <clears throat> all the data flows through that application, and at the end, the, the production data comes out and is being passed into the production machine to produce uh, metal um, shields or metal parts for um, air conditions, air, for large industry type or um, skyscraper type air condition systems. And it's all being handled throughout one application. And these guys have also written a mobile application where they can basically manage the processes that they have in-house now from a mobile phone, smartphone, tablet device, including you know, planning the production so they can plan at what time, what, kind, what parts will be produced and things like that. Pretty amazing. And in, in production systems like this, the EMF type pictures are being used, um, you know, to to display and describe the parts that are going to be produced. So we added this picture type that it can be displayed in Team Developer. Let's see, I have, do I have a sample for this as well? one I use for the screenshot. Or whatever you want to use there. So the EMF image type. IME enhancements um, control the behavior of the IME editor for languages like Chinese and Japanese. Active coding assistant for graphic characters. This works for data fields, multi-line text, combo box, and grid and table columns. You can, in the Attribute inspect, Inspector, you can set IME mode to automatic, active, or inactive. So those are the choices. And once it's set to active, then you basically, you see here's a data field. You start typing something, and then I don't have experience with these languages, so I don't know if these are similar characters then, or no idea. But that's kind of how people with Chinese and Japanese language um, are used to use Windows. Okay. Any questions regarding the UX controls in 7.0? Yeah. There's one question, um, which is for the export-import, do we need Excel installed? Okay, so the question is, for the export-import, do we need Excel installed? Now, for the grid export import, you don't need Excel installed, so it's not going via the um, Excel com server that needs to be installed. No, no Excel license required for that. <laughs>